everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really elegant spinning pop-out card. So I've done the, or pop-out box card, I've done these before with a strip of acetate through the middle and this centerpiece then pops out, but I wanted to change it up a bit and I've also changed the size. So I will share the pop-up ones there because those ones are six by six. So if you'd rather make six by six, just substitute the acetate strip that's in those tutorials for this piece that I'm going to show you today. But for those of you that have made that and you want to try something different and a different size, this one is 5x7. So when it folds flat it will fit down into a 5x7 envelope. But the nice thing about this is, is you can wind it up or you can just leave it, it doesn't matter. I've got it on a very thin piece of elastic here but just wrap it around like so, it's up to you how far you go. Then you would lie it flat and pop it in the envelope and then when the person takes it out and it pops into its shape, it will spin around. And it's really nice because it's got that elastic, it's got a little bit of a bounce so it does just spin really nicely. And then I've popped this on one of my hinges that I like to make whenever I make these boxes so that you can have your sentiment still right in the middle but it will also pop out with the card when that stands and it's really nice my mat's a little bit wonky there we go it does stand straight and then on the back you've got room to write your message I've just got to have a fun and festive time this Christmas so let me show you how to make it okay so I've got all the bits and pieces here all the sentiments I've used are from the crafters companion it's the it's Christmas time warm wishes and Merry Christmas sentiment stamp sets I brought these a while back as a bundle but I think they're still available I know quite a few of you have got them now because I've been sharing them a lot but um, I'll try and find the links as normal then I'm using the Sizzix plain circle dies and I'll talk through the sizes of those in a moment I've already done a few bits there. So the papers I used for that one before was the Winter Rose. Not got too much left of this one actually. It's funny because I didn't think I was going to use it as much as all of them but I've actually ended up using it more than the rest. So that's um, a really lovely pad. And then this one here is the Believe in Magic which is just so cute and I've pulled out this lovely one today which has got the reindeer there with the bow and everything on. So again everything will be linked below. Let's just get straight into scoring the actual pop-up or the box, the card piece, whatever you want to call it. So this is a piece of ten and a half by seven. Along the ten and a half inch side, you want to score at two and a half, five, seven and a half, and ten. So you will have four panels that are two and a half inches wide, and then this half an inch panel on the end. Okay, and then you'll need this tiny piece here which is for your sentiment. So if you do want to have the sentiment like that, you might choose to put acetate through this and in that case you'll see some of them I had the sentiment on the acetate. So do check out that playlist because if anything it'll just give you more ideas and inspiration on maybe how to put this together. But this is a piece of four by half an inch and along the four inch side you want to score at one inch, one and a half, two and a half and three. Okay, so that's all the scoring you need to do. Okay, so before we do anything really, we want to start deciding on what circle sizes you want. Now you don't have to do circle, you might want to do an oval, you may do a square, you may do a rectangle. So play around, use what you've got, and if you don't have anything like this, then you might have to cut something on your trimmer, or even on your cutting, your digital cutting machines, okay? And you can also use like a little cup and saucer, or something like that to draw around, okay? So you just need to cut that freehand, or I know a lot of you also have this, which is the X-Cut Circle Cutter, really handy tool I always um, recommend that one okay so I'm using for the actual center circle so I'm keep, I've kept these two together purely because of the like frame that I've done here so you'll see there I've got this gold frame around there to get that you will use the larger of whatever circle size it is that you use for this the middle so to cut the actual main window the aperture I've used this size circle here and this one measures, it is a three and three quarter diameter. And then the next size up, which is the largest one in that particular set, you then pop them together with a bit of washi tape and make sure you get a nice even frame like I've got there and then die cut it and I've used this holographic cardstock and it's given me the ring. So that ring, when we go to put everything together, because I'm gonna cut this one in a minute, but that ring will sit perfectly around it to give you a nice frame. Completely optional, but it is a nice little touch. So with this style, I've got my circle more towards the top. There's no reason why you can't have it in the middle. Again, it's all down to however you think you're going to decorate yours. But I am going to have mine 
about there because these particular dies it's really nice and I, I wish in a way more dies would do it but the cutting line is that inner circle so you'll see there that the, the blade, well it's not, you know, but I guess it is a, a, a bluntish blade, but it's right on that inner circle and it's, it's really good because a lot of dies, they have that cutting line like in the middle. So sometimes it's hard to line up, whereas this is, is just so easy. Okay, so what I've got here is a piece of pattern paper, which is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. Yeah, just double check. Yeah, that's my standard mat size for whenever I make a five by seven card. And that is gonna stick across these two. So, you know, ignore the fold there for the minute. That's gonna be there to help you fold this piece once we've stuck everything down. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can either stick this down and then die cut through both pieces. Okay, and that's really easy to do. But because of the cut being within that inner diameter there, that is the cut circle, I find well, that's just the way I've done it, but I found that die cutting them separately was just easier because, I don't know, I've just done it that way. So if you are worried that you're not going to line this piece up, then I would recommend sticking this down now, then pop your circle over and die cut it. But make sure if you're using a liquid glue that it's dry. I'm going to do mine separately. So I've got this one here and I'm just going to pop a little bit of washi tape and then I'm going to draw around it on the other one. So I'm just going to lay this down where I want it, so again about there, that looks about centre. So you're working within those two panels on the left hand side, so I'm just going to run this through my die machine. Oh and also you will need a larger die machine if you're making the 5x7 because it's a it's got a 7 inch width, width, whereas your kind of standard die machines have a 6 inch width. So you will need an A4 die machine for this size, but that's why I said if you go to the 6x6, that will fit through a smaller die machine. Okay, so that one's now cut nicely, like so. And then what I'm going to do, take that off, is I'm going to flip it over. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to sit this on top of here. Make sure you've got a nice equal frame. Okay, I'm going to just lightly tack it in place, flip it over, and then with a pencil, I'm going to just draw around it, like so. Now I can remove that, and then I can grab that die, and I can just line it up, because that cut line is the inner diameter of this one. It's very easy, although I've got a real crazy pattern here, but there, that's all lined up. So now I'm just going to get that one die cut. So there's two ways to do it. You know, this is the way if you want to, you know, draw around it and do them separately, or if you'd rather just stick them both down and die cut it in one go. You might have to add a few shims, metal shim, things like that to make sure you get a good cut, then you can do. Okay, and now, take that one off there, that's from the other piece. There we go. Now I will have this piece here and because I lined it all up and drew, drew around it, it sits perfectly over that circle, giving me that nice frame. Okay, so I'm now going to stick this one down. I'm going to use the Kalau glue. And then once it's dry, or as it's drying, that's when you kind of want to fold that score line. Because uh, you don't want that to be really stiff when we go to put it together. So I'm just going to cover this in glue. You can use double-sided tape if you'd rather. I'm just going to lay that on there for a minute and just give that a second to grab itself. Okay, and then I'm just going to very carefully just fold like so. And you don't need to fold it all the way back because the card's only ever going to be like that. It's not really going to come out any further, so I'm just going to kind of get it nice and sharp. But then I'm going to just kind of hold it out like that. You see? So it's got enough for it to fold flat, but also enough for it to pop out. Then while that's still kind of drying, I've got my back pieces. So I've got my eat, drink and be merry, which is going to go in there. And these measure two and a quarter by six, by, um, yeah, six and three quarters. And then I've got another one of the pattern paper because it's going to be on the back, the same size, and that's going to go next to it there. So I'm just going to stick those two down. Okay, so that's all stuck down. Then flip it over. You can always, you can fold those lines now actually as well, those score lines. I've got a very thick cardstock here. It's just an odd one. It feels like the little cardstock and it's very similar to the colour of one of them, but it isn't. This is a, this was a piece of A4. 
and we'll do that last one there as well. Okay, so you can see now that that is going to join at the front there. And we've got our back already and then the front coming together. But then I've got this piece here, which is just from the same pad. It's the reverse of this Fox one. I like the Fox one, but it doesn't scream Christmas to me. So I've got this kind of snowy background, but against that one, I think it looks nice. And because I've got that snowflake, I wanted a background that it's going to really stand out against. So again, same size as the other two that you done here. So I'm just going to stick them down. Okay, so that's how mine's going to look. So now I've got these snowflakes here. So you want something that's going to be a mirror image. You want it to be equal size, symmetrical, that kind of stuff. Because when you stick them, obviously, back to back, you want them to join up as if they're one piece. That's if you want to do like I have. You may just have a nice sentiment that spins around and it's you know it is entirely up to you but to get this effect you do some want something that's going to be you know equal so I have got this here is um strong no strong and stre oh, strong and stre stretchy <laughs> I was wondering what it said then but it's just your um just a elastic thread and I was trying to see if there's a size for this one I think it's the same as the other one I've got, and that was from the range. But it doesn't, doesn't have to be stretchy at all. It can just be normal thread or some twine or something that you've got. But um, you just want to cut some off that's going to obviously cover the circle, um, you know, the aperture that we've got. And then I'm going to, I'm going to actually going to use the Cosmic Shimmer because this is a real sticky, very, very sticky kind of PVA glue. Um, or acrylic, is this one? Yeah, acrylic glue. Um, so I'm just gonna, although now it seems like it's blocked. Okay, so I'm just gonna cover this just a thin amount on one side. Okay, I'm just gonna lay that one down and then with my piece of elastic here, I'm just gonna run it through the center so it's just sat along that that hexagon there and then I'm going to stick this one over the top I'm going to let that set for a minute and then I've just got these really lovely faceted embellishments just to cover the inside there look at the shine on that I absolutely adore this card I've brought so much of it and then I'm just going to put a little tiny little blob of some hot glue there just so that these definitely don't move and just sit that one on the other side okay so now that's ready to twist and when it goes so fast it just looks look at the way that catches the light such a pretty pretty piece okay so then what we want to do is attach it inside here so you're working within that score line now what I did find was quite handy was just to cut just a thin couple of strips of just like some not like a copy paper something a little bit stronger than that but just a, yeah just a strong paper just to kind of pop over the top of it once we stick it down so because I'm using the elastic I'm gonna kind of stick the top one down first and not bother stretching it out and then I'll pull it down so I'll come up a little bit higher there and I'm gonna use a mix. What I'm going to do actually first of all is I'm going to put a very thin um, blob of hot glue and this is what I've done in the other ones actually. So I'm just going to sit that there. Obviously you don't want to melt this elastic so um, I'm going to keep that there and then I'm just going to pop because I don't want there to be too much bulk and the hot glue can be quite bulky when it dries hard so then I'm going to pop a little bit of this glue either side. It'll be a little bit messy unless I cover most of it with this, but you don't see any of this. And I'm just going to squash the hot glue and then that bit of paper and it just all adds some strength really to that piece because there'll be a little bit little bit of tension because I'm pulling the elastic. But I'll just clear away that glue. Okay, and then I'm just going to snip off anything overhanging there. And now I can just pull this down until it sits in the middle. So about there. And I'm just going to hold my finger there and just repeat the same thing again. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of hot glue, okay, and then trim the bottom of that off. Now that will still be able to fold, but when we bring it all together, we've got a really nice spinny, spinny piece. Love it. Absolutely love this. Got a little bit of glue there. Let's just get rid of that because it's bugging me. 
I always get asked whenever I use this, it's an array, it's a glue eraser rubber. Glue eraser rubber? It's a glue eraser and it is brilliant. So I just pick off all these bits when it gets a bit dirty, um, but they last, well, they last forever really. Okay, so now we want to stick this together. So I'm just going to bring in my colour out. You want to stick this one so it's flat, okay? So just fold that piece under and lie the whole card flat. Okay, while that's there drying, I'm going to bring in my ring and I'm going to, again, pop some glue all the way around, just a thin layer. And then just sit that one. And it's easy to line up, just focus on the inner circle. It just frames that snowflake perfectly. Again, I'm going to leave that there flat for the minute. And while that's all drying, you've got this piece here. So what you want to do is you will have four score lines. I've got glue all on my fingers. So you've got one, two, three, four. The two inner ones you want to make mountain folds and the outer ones you want to become valley so that it folds like that. Okay. You're then going to add glue to this top piece and stick your message down. Your message can be anything you want as long as it fits when flat within the bottom of your card, so within this section. So the one I've got here, you'll see when it's flat, fits nicely there. So I'm gonna turn this over and just stick this piece so the two flat sides are facing up because that's what we're gonna to use to attach it to our card. Try and get it in the center because it will just help when you stick it all together. Okay, so that's what you should have. And now what you wanna do is add glue to these two pieces. Okay, and then you just wanna, these two to fold in so that you've got the two pieces together like that so the glued pieces almost look joined. And you wanna get the middle of that to kind of run through the middle of this piece here. So I'm just gonna roughly stick it there for a minute. And if you let it lift up, you'll be able to see, and you want it to sit over the fold. So look, if I bring mine up, you've got time to move it across. So I just need to shift mine across just a little bit. But there we go. And you can wiggle it a bit. Make sure your, your sentiment's straight. It doesn't matter underneath if that's a little bit wonky, as long as the sentiment's straight. But now it will pop out with the, you know, whatever you've got spinning. And I just think it's really nice. I like things in the center. And when you make these kind of cards, it's hard to have something like that. Some people just run a thin piece of glue on that middle piece and stick it down. You can do that if you want, but I quite like the way that this moves kind of with the card. So just check that circle stuck nicely. There you have it. And then again, just test it, kind of spin it around. You'd lie it flat. That's how the person will see it in the card, which I think looks really nice. And then when they pop it out, it spins around. Isn't it gorgeous? Love these. Okay, so there are my two spinning pop-out box cards. I think they've got, you know, such a nice profile. They're one of my favorite style cards to do. I love box cards in general, but these ones I think look lovely. So if you're new to this style, do go check out that playlist up here. Cause like I said, the pop-out style with the acetate is a really nice effect. And um, yeah, it's been well received that card. I've had lots of people ask me to make that one as well for, you know, when my friends and stuff want me to make cards. So yeah, now maybe they'll want me to make these as well. But there you have it. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Please give me a thumbs up if you have and consider subscribing if you haven't so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.